Hey, hey, hey! Xenoblade 3 has one of the most customizable battle systems in the entire series and is very fun to mess around with. But after playing the game for over 500 hours, it does start to feel a little bit stale after a while. So I decided to try something new, a pretty cool idea I had. I uh, decided to randomize Xenoblade 3 and see how much different that would be compared to just a normal playthrough. Now this isn't going to be your conventional randomizer. I didn't go in and change the code or anything of the randomizer, obviously because I don't know how to do any of that and I don't think the technology to make a Xenoblade 3 randomizer even exists yet. But within the restraints of the game, I randomized it as best as I could. But there are a couple of rules to this that I want to go over real quick that I hope make everything make a lot more sense. Now how this actually works is that I will use just a standard RNG random number generator to uh, generate a number 1 through 27 for the party members and then 1 through 23 for the heroes. But I will roll a number and whatever number that is, that is the class that I will have to use for that character. And for example, if I roll a 14, the 14th class is Stalker. So whatever character rolls that number will get that class. And how I determine this is after every major fight, I will do a roll and completely uh, randomize the entire team. So after a major boss fight or a couple of smaller fights, I will re-roll. Everyone gets a brand new number and they will be given that class. And just to make it a little bit more funny, all right, just to make it a little bit more funny and entertaining, I take off everything off of the characters, the gems, accessories, skills, arts, and everything, and I will let auto build choose for me. I just let auto build create my builds, all right? It's actually insane sometimes and sometimes i'll get really clutch skills that save me in situations where i otherwise wouldn't have survived but those are really the two major things that after every boss fight or major fight i will randomize the entire team including the hero and whatever class they get is what they use all the way up until the next major point or major fight and I will be playing this on hard mode just to make it that bit more interesting. So now we got the rules out of the way, let's get into this shit. So I do my first roll before we even start the run so I can start out uh, already with the randomized everything. So I roll all the numbers and Noah gets Flash Fencer, Mio gets Signifer, Uni gets Full Metal Jaguar, Tyon with Martial Artist. Lance gets Stalker, Senna gets Sword Fighter, and we have Ethel as our hero. So I put all the classes on everybody, dequip everything, let auto build give me a loadout, level everyone down, and now we're ready to start the actual run. And these first couple fights could not have gone any better because of course with Uni having Full Metal Jaguar, a very strong class that was not meant to be used this early in the game, we absolutely sweep through these first couple waves. And then I realized Noah actually got capable hands from the uh, auto build in this loadout. So that was a pleasant surprise, but it doesn't help because we're not really going to be using it for all that long. But after we get through these first couple waves of grunts. Uh, the fight against the Avis was pretty self-explanatory. No. Alright, UD. Alright, UD. I mean, yeah, it was pretty easy. UD got Dances of Barrages, which is a skill that uh, has a 12% chance at rank 20 to keep your recharge on an art. So I got lucky there, kept the recharge on impulse wave, letting me use it one more time, just barely enough to uh, cap out Flame Lord and use that to end the fight. But now that that's over, we do another reroll. Noah gets Thaumaturge, Uni gets Machine Assassin, and Lands, my guy, gets stuck with Life Sage. Yeah, Lands gets kind of fucked throughout this, uh, throughout this randomizer. But after that, we make our th way through Everblight Plains onward towards Colony 9. 
But once we get the Colony 9, we take care of our usual duties. We go fake buy stuff at Camilla's store. We go get the Piranax meat for Rhodes, uh, collect a PDF card, and then we make our way out into Xana Plains towards Alfeto Valley. Now, once we get to Alfeto Valley, we fight a group of wolves. These weren't really an issue at all. I didn't struggle. Uni got kind of low on HP once, but after that, we were fine. And I was going to originally randomize the party here again after this, but the next fight is literally up ahead, not even uh, like 20 seconds away. So I thought there was no point. I might as well just fight the next uh, mini boss with the team I already have. And unfortunately, there's no way to uh, lower Mwamba's level or even take him out of the party. So he has to kind of be here for this. But this next fight against this Roppel, you can really see how clutch Dance of Barrages is. Off rip, okay? I got, what, four times? I got the art saved twice. So I get the spam Tyrant Cross twice, Fatal Bite twice, and then into Terror Onslaught. And already like 75% of the health bar was gone. Yeah, but this fight was pretty goddamn easy because Dance of Barrages is just so goddamn clutch. Everybody lay into that one. Just keep attacking something fast. Oh, oh my god, yeah, he's almost dead already. Okay, that was pretty fucking clutch. That was actually clutch, bro. Yuri got the fucking... She got the knob on strap. Now, that was actually hella clutch. That was actually hella clutch. Wait, she didn't get not punched trap. Dance of barrages, bro. That came in so much. Now, after that, I immediately roll for a brand new party. And this one's actually pretty clutch, mainly just for Noah. But Noah got Seraph, Uni got Yume Smith, and Lance got Medic Gunner. So Lance getting shafted again, but it's clutch because Noah got Seraph and Seraph is the class I use on him just in general in a regular Xenoblade 3 uh, save file. So that's very, very clutch. But after that, we go to the campsite and then we make our way to the very first Agnes encounter. Now we get to the first Agnes encounter. Oh, normally this would be pretty scary, but Noah having Seraph is kind of easy. So we take out the first enemy pretty quickly. Noah is in danger of dying here. But I kill the second enemy, which causes me to level up, which fully heals him. So that was very clutch. I would have probably died without that. Kill the next enemy and then the Avis or whatever that big enemy is called. Yeah, easy fusion inferno, inferno dance. So that was nothing. And then after that, we make our way to fight the automatons. And those are a pushover. And now we do one more re-roll re -roll before we fight the Agnes side of the party. And in that re-roll, Noah gets Thaumaturge again. There is going to be a lot of repeat classes in this in this uh, randomizer. But luckily we clutch and Uni gets Lapidarist and Lands gets Royal Summoner, which is okay. And now that we have our team, we go into the fight with the Agnes side of the party. And this is how it went. Oh, Mio. Oh, well, Uni's dead. Oh, good thing I have a fucking healer with Noah. Holy shit. Oh, uh, yep, that was dead, bro. There's nothing I can do. No, <laughs> already. Um, yeah. Oh, fuck. This is going to be hard. Expected. Yeah, so that's on me. I kind of just went in all careless and just tried to take out Mio. Yeah, it was a smart idea trying to uh, take out the evasion tank first, you know, which specializes in evading attacks. But this time I actually had a strat. So first I target Tyon to get him out of there just so no healing. We don't want him healing Mio or Senna. 
So we get Tyon out of there, take out the healer, and then we go for Senna since she does the most damage. She's the scariest in uh, one killing us. And then we take out Mio lastly, and she wasn't too hard. Mio was kind of easy to take out once we actually hit our attacks. But in the second attempt, that fight went relatively well. After that, immediately after that, so I don't have time to open a menu or do anything, we go straight into the fight with D and J. Now this one isn't too difficult either. The main strat is to just put down an arts heal ring and then just spam arts inside of it to keep myself healthy and uh, full on health, which isn't really that hard to do. Lands does die once, but that's fine. And apparently Yuri got Dance of Barrages again, so I get to put up three arts heal of fields, so we are flourishing. We are staying healthy out here, drinking water and staying hydrated. Now after that, we fight D and J uh, in Ouroboros form, and I mean, Easy. Easy, bro. Easy. Easy. After that, we make our way back onto Colony 9, and along the way, I do another uh, roll of the RNG. This time, Noah gets Lone Exile, Uni gets Ogre, and Lands gets Tactician. So, pretty balanced team and then once we get to the mouth of Alfeto Valley we fight a group of Kavesi soldiers they're not too difficult it's just a bunch of ARP spam for big damage and that's really about it since Noah has lone exile he can hold aggro pretty well and is pretty tanky so we're never really in danger of dying but then we finally get to play as the Agnes trio and the best character in the entire series with Mio now that we have control of the Agnes trio, we do have a fight against one Agnes soldier coming up and we channel the power of Mithras crit. We channel the power of crit, myth, crit, Krithra's crit damage and we absolutely dominate this, uh, this measly little Agnes soldier here. Now that that is out of the way, we meet up with the rest of our party and now we have our full party of all seven members i think this is where i also put ethel in the party actually i don't think we get her we were able to use her this early regardless we make our way through the rest of alfeta valley into melic meadows and finally onto the Faranis hulk now that we've made our way over to the Faranis hulk we fight these five little crust dip not too much of an issue at all then we go and get the ether for the ether cylinder we need to restore the Faranis Hulk and for some reason when I came back to the Faranis Hulk this happened this is it I can confirm that they were damaged beyond repair we'll be fine let's install an ether cylinder in the power compartment and get the Faranis moving so the music just cut out for a couple seconds out of nowhere for some reason never seen that happen before but after that we f make our way over to Aegis Wilderness but before we actually get in there we have to fight a little group of Gebel and they were pushovers and now that we've done that it's finally time for our first full party randomization and for our first full party randomization it's actually pretty solid Noah got Zephyr Mio got Medic Gunner, Uni, Nalponic Champion, Tyon, Lost Vanguard, Lands, Guardian Commander, Senna, Yume Smith, and for the hero, I got Monica. And I actually called this shit so hard. It's so clutch that I got Monica here. Now after that we finally make our way to Aegis Wilderness for real this time, and there is a lot of walking, a big section with nothing really happening. Go through Aegis Wilderness, get to the campsite, and then after that we do the whole gem and cooking thing now we have to go fight the aspar for the glowing eyeballs and and this fight surprisingly i played as mio with metagunner and not naponic champion with uni like i thought i did but i mean at least it worked so anyway in this aspar fight the main strat is to just keep up powering as much as i can so that the party can do more damage and just keeping them healthy whenever someone gets low lands almost dies at the very beginning but we clutch up and then once the aspar hits 25 percent of its health bar gone it 
goes into a scripted serpentine blow which knocks everyone to one hp and uh topples everyone and this is where we finally unlock chain attacks i don't actually use a chain attack in this match in this fight as it would have just been longer to do that but i just keep up the power rings and i get quite a bit out keep up the power rings keep the party healthy and we end this fight in no time after that we roll the rng another time and this time noah got sword fighter mio ogre stalker uni guardian commander tyon lone exile lands santa santa what the hell santa got thaumaturge and then we got nia bro we got nia in this bitch so early i got nia 19 20 3 i'll show oh. you what a queen can do i should have to say like that all bro now that we got our team in place i level down and then we make our way through the rest of Aegis Wilderness onwards to the Ethel fight. Now, I don't uh, reshuffle or uh, do the RNG here for the team after these couple grunt fights uh, because I, it would just be very annoying to have to shuffle three times in a row, one after the other, because I take care of these grunts, then we have to fight Ethel, and then immediately after that is Console K. So I decided to just keep the same team from these grunt fights all the way to Ethel. But now that we're actually at the Ethel fight, this is not really hard at all. I just focus on Ethel and just unload as much damage as I can with uh, Sword Fighter Noah. And uh, what's his name? Lance having load exile is very nice, so he keeps all of the aggro off of the attackers, which is really only Noah because Stalker really doesn't do a whole lot of damage unless you build it which I have proved. So, hey, look, I have some videos on my channel showing the true power of Stalker. I love that class. It's garbage, but I love it. But yeah, really, Noah's the only one who needs to worry about not getting aggro and having Lance hold the aggro is very nice. We also have Nia. So not only do we get damage reduction, we also get insane healing. So we have no issue with uh, dying or really even coming close to dying. But for this fight, I just focus on Ethel and just ignore the two grunts on the side until after I take care of her since she is the biggest threat. But she wasn't really that hard at all and now uh, I reshuffle for the Mobius K fight. After we beat Ethel, I leave, I give up to do my reroll. And this team is actually very clutch for this fight. So uh, Noah got lost Vanguard, Mio got fucking Signifer, Uni got War Medic, Tyon got Martial Artist, Full Metal Jaguar for lands, Senna got Troubadour, and we got Gondor, Gondor as our hero. Now this is very clutch, all right? Mio getting Signifer here was probably the clutchest role for this fight as I already have Mio at rank 20 with Signifer, so that's very clutch. I love Signifer Mio. Uh, Noah has lost Vanguard, so he's going to be holding aggro pretty well. And then just the extra healing with uh, Uni on Full Metal Jaguar on top of the Signifer buff. So we really don't struggle all that much with this fight. But here I do control lands. Now that we get into the actual fight, I control lands for Full Metal Jaguar. And I just unload damage on him. We don't really have to worry about dying or anything. We get a ton of buffs with Signifer. We get a ton of healing with War Medic from Uni. And we get... Uh, no aggro drawn to ourselves because not only does Noah hold aggro, but I have I got the dead set art on uh, For lands which reduces aggro and increases attack So as long as we can just keep our aggro down with that with Noah holding it pretty well We're not really in any danger of dying since lands is our main damage dealer We kind of need him to survive. So the first phase wasn't really that hard at all but now for the second phase when he's actually in the mobius form instead of console here my strat is to just build up interlink level three as fast as i can with uh mio and noah so after i unload lands arts i swap between mio and noah quite a bit and just spam fusion arts as much as i can wait to get a fusion art and then just use them all so i can just as quickly as possible get to interlink level three and then once we go for once we get to interlink level three it's just easy from there because veltal just does hella damage as it is and the higher 
or the closer your interlink gauge is to overheating the more damage you do so once we went into interlink we only needed to use like two what talon arts and the fight is over it, it noah's ouroboros is insane with how much damage it does but that was the strat just get into ouroboros as quick as we can with interlink level three to get to talon art as quick as we can and then just unload damage from there so after that very clutch fight, I shuffle again, and this team ain't looking too good. So we have Noah on Naponic Champion, Mio on Guardian Commander, Uni Sword Fighter, uh, Lands Machine or no Tyon Machine Assassin, Lands Yume Smith, Santa Oil Summoner, which I got hyped for, and then Eno as my hero. So uh, notice how we have absolutely zero healers on this team, and I didn't find this out until we were actually in a fight. But I mean, I guess it's okay since we have two Naponic champions, which I mean, that class is pretty good at keeping aggro. So, but regardless, after this, we continue our way to Colony 4. We, you know, do the rest of the story that's in there, help out some of the people in there. And then we finally move on to do Ethel's uh, hero quest. And during the climb up that little spire to get to the top to meet Ethel, uh, this bullshit happens. Hello? Oh, br uh. First of all, what the fuck killed me and how? So yeah, I got a little bit upset there. But after that, we actually go into the airdrop and fight the wolves here. And this is where I realized we had no healers. So I start off playing as Senna here for some reason. I don't know why I was so excited to get a Royal Summoner because I guess I was just thinking of the uh, Arc Sage Gauntlet strat with Seraph. Uh, with the uh, Elemental Genesis special or Talon Art. But regardless, uh, Senna dies here, so I switched to Noah uh, because that's just the class I wanted to play as and Naponic Champion. Uh, I, I don't play much, so I mean, guess it's experience. And I was I was just waiting for Senna to be revived and she just wasn't being revived. I was like, okay, what's taking so goddamn long? And then I realized, oh shit, wait, we have no healers. Oh wait, we have no healers! Yeah, we have no healers, so Seta's just fucked. And then after that, we finish Ethel's hero quest, and I actually put Valdi in the party and level him down, because he will force himself into our party. He's inserted into our party, and we can't take him out for his hero quest once we get to Colony 30, and there's a big boss fight once we get there where he is mandatory. So I just level him down here before we actually get over there. Now that that's all settled, we make our way through Ribby Flats to the actual Valdi fight. And here, this is why having a healer is very important because three of my characters died and it seems like my laptop did as well because it started lagging hella hard here. It was overheating like a bitch. So most of this is just running at like two frames per hour. However, yeah, three of my characters died. We only had Noah, Uni, and uh, Eno left. And this is why having Naponic Champion was so clutch because Eno and ne Noah took like no damage. And just to finish the fight, I went into Noah's Ouroboros and just absolutely shredded these uh, Levness. So I guess Mio was also alive too, but you get the point. Having healers is very important if you couldn't tell and if you want to see how important it is go watch my challenge run where i did beating xenoblade 3 with no healers that was fun go watch that i had a blast making that but after this a pretty quick fight we re-roll again for our team for the upcoming boss fight and this time we get soul fighter soul fighter <laughs> sword fighter for noah mio gets soul hacker Uni gets Signiferd, Tyon gets fucking Troubadour, that was actually so clutch since I run Troubadour on uh, Tyon regularly in my regular team anyway. Um, Lands gets Martial Artist, Senna gets Lapidarus, which will be very nice for the crit rate, and we get Kamaravi as our hero, unfortunately. But I don't add Kamaravi into the party until after we beat this upcoming boss fight because Valdi, like I said, is mandatory for this fight since it is his hero quest. 
Now we run around doing Valdi's uh, hero quest, collecting a couple things, and one of the objectives is fighting any quites, which is no issue. I don't even know why I'm mentioning this. We get rid of it pretty quickly and just unload damage with a sword fighter. But now, after this, we get into the fight in Colony 30, the big boss fight against the big uh, Levness. So here, the strat is pretty similar to the one with uh, Mobius K to where I will just unload damage with Noah and just build up interlink to level three and then go into Ouroboros and just go all out on damage. So it takes about halfway through its health bar finally get to level three and from here i just just spam arts until i get my talent art and just shred his health bar i barely barely missed out on the last talent art at the very end here which kind of scared me because i did need that damage boost or else we would have died but other than that we clutched and even if we died it re really wouldn't have made a difference since we have what like four healers on the team so we were stacked no matter what Three. Ah! okay <laughs> Why did I get so scared there? Only well, because I, mean, I kind of needed that damage boost. We're all right. I was scared that Interlink was going to end before I could get my talent art off, which would be very not good because um, that was a massive, am massive amount of damage I would have missed out on because. Yes, and I'm very underleveled too, so. so. Immediately after this, I do another reroll, and for this one, Noah got lost Vanguard again. <laughs> Mio actually got Stalker, bro, I'm telling you, Mio Stalker is disgusting. Go watch these videos, I'm trying to punch y'all on. You know what? I'm even going to link it in the description. Just to show you how much I love Stalker Mio. But you already know who I gotta control for the upcoming fights. But Mio got Stalker, Uni got Heavy Guard, what's his name? Tyon got Full Metal Jaguar, Naponic Champion for Lands, Senna clutched and got Machine Assassin. I actually use that class on her, okay? Mainly for the outfit, but I use the class too sometimes. And of course, we keep Kamaravi. So after all that, I go back to the campsite. I level my team accordingly, and then we go up to fight the Lepus at the old Kana battlefield in Ray Bell Tableland. Now this fight is really more of just a war of attrition than anything. This fight takes a little while. There's nothing I really need to worry about. A couple characters get low a couple times, but it's not really an issue. And then uh, we have Mio has break and then Kamaravi, Kamaravi has topple so that helps us get a little bit extra damage and take a little bit less extra damage but this fight just takes a minute says again stalker isn't really the strongest class it doesn't have super omega huge damage unless you like build it to be that way if it has just an auto build a build then it's not really gonna do anything it needs very specific uh things to happen in a specific order for it to really unload damage right i can hit a million damage on stalker but that's if i have it built a certain way here i'm barely hitting like 10k or anything so this fight takes a while but at the end i do end up just going in noah's ouroboros a little early and just finishing the fight because i just got impatient and didn't want to wait till level three so i or i went into interlink at level two and just finished the fight this one wasn't really an issue kind of surprising since we didn't really have yeah we didn't we had no healers but for some reason this fight was a lot easier than the fight against valdi and those equites so either way we got through the fight without really any issues but before we make our way into Araya, we do yet another reroll, and this time we get Signa for Noah. Mio gets Flash Fencer, which is pretty nice. Uni gets Medic Gutter, her own class, but I don't even have it at rank 20. Uh, Tyon gets Ogre. What's his name? Lance gets Troubadour. And Senna gets Flash Fencer, so two Flash Fencers is pretty nice. And then Alexandra is our uh, hero. So there's a lot of crit rate, uh, a lot of crit damage going around here. 
But after that, we make our way through the long Orion tunnels. There's a whole lot of nothing happening. You know, we get the gems for Riku. We fight a couple uh, Vangs here and there, but nothing too major to really switch up the party. And then we get on to the Queen Arachno fight, which is probably one of my favorite points in the whole game just because of just how much screen clutter there is. I love seeing all of like the big ass damage numbers just clutter the screen. It's just, I love it all. I don't know why, uh, it's just really nice to look at. I love screen clutter like that. Stimulation, I don't know, do I have ADHD? I don't fucking know. Uh, maybe I'm a TikTok kid, all right? Maybe I'm a TikTok iPad kid. Uh, it's terrible, but the screen clutter looks very nice. But this fight didn't really take I mean, it didn't take long, but it, there's nothing I really could have done. So obviously at first I just go into Noah's Ouroboros and just spam my AoE attacks to get rid of all the smaller enemies. And then we just have to fight the Queen Arachno and there's nothing I can really do except for just spam my Fusion Null Slash since that's the most amount of damage I could deal at this point. And didn't help that she kept going into Cocoon and blocking our attacks. So it took a little bit but I was able to get through it without really any trouble. Now for our next reroll, this this team's pretty interesting. I got Incursor for Noah. Mio got Full Metal Jaguar. Uh, what's her name? Uni got Strategos. Tyon got Stalker. Lands got Ogre. Senna coming in clutch with the Machine Assassin again. And for my hero, I actually have Shulk, surprisingly. But now that we have our new team, we make our way through the rest of the Orion tunnels. We fight a couple hordes of Agnes soldiers, not really an issue. And then we take our way through the water duct out into Great Kote Falls, where we have our showdown with the Lambda Ferranis. Now the fight against the Ferranis here really isn't that much of an issue. Uh, all I really have to do is just unload damage with Mio here with full metal jaguar there's nothing else i can really do there's not really any trouble or anything it just takes a while because i don't have an optimal build so i'm not doing as much damage as i would like to make this fight go faster but near the end just like the previous fights i'll go into nose Ouroboros and finish the fight off with that and then uh, immediately after that we start facing some trouble with the yorin fight here uh this uh, didn't go so well. Yeah, so the first attempt did not go well at all. So the second attempt, I did level up to level 30 to kind of match this level since I got bodied the first time because I was under leveled. But here, my strat was to just play as Uni and just keep up on healing as much as I can. Since she has Stratagos, she is pretty good at healing and keeping down a regenerate field. And it was even clutch that it turns out she had Dance of Barrages so I could keep up the healing fields for quite a long time. And I, it was going pretty well at first, and then once the bleed damage came in, we did kind of get fucked. I did try to save it by going into Uni's Ouroboros form and just spamming buffs and healing, but at that point it was already too late and people were already low and starting to die, so that didn't really work out too well, and I had died again. And then the third attempt, I was kind of the same strategy, just controlling Uni and keep staying on top of healing. But here, at the beginning of the fight, I made Lands go into Ouroboros form so he could keep aggro for as long as possible. So uh, we could get a little bit of damage off before I started uh, executing the rest of my plan. So I wanted Lands to go into Ouroboros, just hold aggro for as long as he can so we can get as much damage uh, for as long as we can. And then after Lanza's Ouroboros ran out, I immediately went into Unis to start spamming healing and buffs. Just again, it's more of just to stall to get the health bar down a little bit lower. And then as soon as Uni came out of Ouroboros, I went into Noah's and just did as much damage as I could. And we got the health bar pretty damn low. And then Mio actually clutched with Full Metal Jaguar at the end. If, if I had waited like a second longer, we were fucked here because I killed him right before he came down with Ruined Marionette, which would have wiped the whole team. So Mio really clutched there with Full Metal Jaguar. But finally, we got through that annoying ass Yorn fight. 
now that that's over, it's time for for our whatever uh roll. And this time, Noah still gets in cursor, so he's staying on in cursor for this next fight. Mio gets Live Sage, so you already know what class I'm playing. Uh, Uni gets Flash Fencer, Tyon Ogre, Lands Medic Gunner, Senna Troubadour, and once again we get Eno as our hero. So now, after this fight, we go on to Colony, Colony Lambda, and we do all the Colony, Colony Lambda shit, and then we leave and make our way through the rest of Great Cote Falls, where we come uh, across the Umber Draug, Draug, Umber Draug, Umbra or Umber, I think it's Umber, what, it doesn't matter, I don't even know why this fight is here. Uh, has, has it ever really been explained anywhere why this fight, I don't even think anyone asked this, or they like Ionios moments questions either. Why is this Umber Drog here? Why do we just randomly fight this random ass dragon in the middle, just out of nowhere? It has no story significance, no character significance. It's just here for no reason. I don't understand it. Uh, but regardless, this fight is probably the most boring out of the entire randomizer because there's absolutely nothing going on. It takes forever to kill and we aren't suffering at all because again mio has life sage so our healing is stacked no one is ever in danger of dying like a single time and since we don't really have <laughs> any attackers our greatest attacker is noah with incursor but he has i don't think i think he's still at rank one on incursor so he's already doing no damage and then tyon and ogre again also doing like no damage and everyone else is just a healer i mean i guess we have flash fencer uni but again she's not really doing anything so all we can really do is just sit here and watch the health bar slowly tick down since we're not in trouble of dying and there's no real way to increase my damage except for ouroboros which is limited at that so this fight is very boring but naturally of course i did get through so surprisingly i actually decided to uh do another reroll here considering how long the fight actually took and i shit you the fuck not bro i rolled 16 thrice three times i rolled a 16 on noah so again noah is uh has in cursor for the third time in a fucking row i'm not even lying i have no reason to cap about this noah got a cursor for the third time in a row so i guess the game just likes that for him and then mio got full metal jaguar again uni got low in exile which is clutch because this is also a class i normally run on her Troubadour Tyon, we already know, a Guardian Commander lands, and Senna got an Aponic Champion, and our healer, or spoilers, our hero is Valdi. So this team is pretty stacked, all things considered. Now we make our way through the rest of Great Cote Falls, and we make our way into Mac the Wildwood, where we come across Juniper and her Agnian squad. This fight was actually pretty fun for me because I like controlling Lone Exile Uni and look at just the screen clutter, look at all the blue lines everywhere, the damage numbers, everything moving around, damn. I guess I really am a TikTok kid, bro. I can't live like this. I gotta delete my whole channel. I cannot be caught, you know, being called a TikTok kid. This, this ain't it. However, this fight was pretty simple. It's pretty easy. I just keep uh, aggro with Uni very very easily and especially with like gale slash as a multi-hit into violent streak uh it's it's very clutch she does a lot of damage and she just has a lot of aggro control so no one is really in danger of dying or uni doesn't really lose aggro once a single time i think throughout the whole fight it is a bit annoying that juniper keeps evading a lot of my fucking attacks but uh, I, I fucking wipe her at the end there with uh noah so this fight was not that bad and i actually recorded this one this time unlike my fucking challenge run where my capture card just died and then pick up the fight okay so we do our next reroll here and i don't know what the hell is up with this game but this game seems to really like full metal jaguars because i got three fmjs on this team bro i got three full metal jaguars on this team so we're just Stacked for damage and evasion. So first Noah and Mio get Full Metal Jaguar. Mio stays Full Metal Jaguar from the last uh, shuffle. And then Uni here gets Zephyr. Then Tyon gets FMJ. So there's our three already. 
lands finally gets a class he can do something with with a heavy guard senna gets in cursor and then we get kamaravi once again for our hero but god damn bro three fmjs and one team that is kind of insane what however this triple full metal jaguar doesn't last long as we have to fight these little horde this little horde of rhinons here which doesn't really take long with having three full metal jaguars we get damage off pretty quickly and then i just end the fight off with noah's Ouroboros. that's going to become a trend throughout this if you couldn't tell but i mean we actually got three people close to dying one including mio which isn't great because she's my main damage dealer not that it really matters but we had no healers for this team but it's fine because right after this horde i go and uh, shuffle one again once once more one more game and for this reroll we get noah with signifer mio once again getting flash fencer uni with sword fighter tyon on stalker but lands on tactician which is the first time this class has come up senna gets her own class with ogre and valdi is once again our hero so there you can see quite a pattern a lot of classes are repeating throughout this uh, randomizer and that's not on purpose that's just the numbers that i'm getting in the rng so i guess these classes are favored i guess by google now, as we trundle along our way through the rest of Mac the Wildwood, I forgot that we actually come across Sagiri here and we have to fight Sagiri about halfway through. This caught me off guard, so I was not ready. But Sagiri actually gave us some trouble. She gave us a little bit of trouble. Uh, so here, uh, we were pretty close to dying, but I just used Senna and just focused on uh, playing as Senna here. And then uh, we were getting a little bit uh, close to dying. It was getting dangerous. So I went into Senna's Ouroboros and just started spamming arts to kind of just stall and survive as much as I could. I thought we had absolutely zero chance with this fight. But as soon as Senna got out of her Ouroboros, uh, I swapped to Noah's Ouroboros as soon as Senna died. And I just started unloading damage, bro. I was scared. Thankfully though, you don't have to completely deplete her health bar and you only have to get rid of about 33% before the fight ends and you can move on. So that was super clutch. If it weren't for that, I probably would have died here. And of course, since that was a pretty substantial fight, it is time for a reroll and this team isn't all that bad. So we had Noah on Lapidarist, which I think is the first time I've ever used Lapidarist on him. Uh, Mio got in Cursor, Uni again got Stratagos, Flash Fencer went to Tyon, Lance got Guardian Commander, Senna with Sword Fighter, and we clutch with the hero getting fucking Fiona. So we got more Signifer, more buffs. So we're doing we're pretty stacked here right now. We're doing we're doing great on buffs here. But after that Sigiri fight, we make our way on over to the uh to the campsite where we have to fight some Anlu to get some Anlu meat. Uh, this isn't really anything and then after this we take the long trek all the way over to our over to Engardo Pass right before we get into the Kevis Castle region and this is where we fight Ethel and Kamaravi's Feranis. Now this fight normally you'd think would be pretty scary but this fight actually wasn't all that bad. Uh, it was very clutch that we had Noah who had pride of place for the uh Talonard, so it's a blaze and a regenerate effect and it's fucking massive so i can stand in that and heal while they are taking damage that's clutch but we also have fiona with the buff so signifer is a very good class get buffs up pretty well uh, uni with the strategos healing even though that wasn't too important it did help me heal a little bit in the regenerate field but it it wasn't all that important but the main star of this damn fight bro is mio obviously mio is the star of this fight i have uh incursor maxed out rank 20 on mio so she does a lot of damage so my main goal here is to just focus on positional damage which does a lot and even near the end on the second front is you don't even have to get the positional effect for the damage to just be insane the, and cursor crit rate is stupid, bro. And cursor crit damage is insane. I do a lot of damage with Incursor Mio. I didn't really struggle. Mio died like twice ever, and that's it. No one died throughout the entire fight except Mio twice. Uh, but yeah, mainly this fight was just me unloading damage 
just crit damage with Incursor. I didn't have to use the chain attack. I don't think I went into an Ouroboros a single time, anything. So we kind of clutched. But at the very end, Mio did die after getting off some big, big damage. And then I decided to just finish off the fight with Sword Fighter uh, with Senna. So it really wasn't all that hard at all, surprisingly. No, immediately after that, I probably should have shuffled here and like re-rolled, but I, I completely skipped my mind. So my bad on that one, I should have uh, shuffled here. But the Mobius O&P fight isn't that much different from the Kamaravi and Ethel fight. A lot of it is just making sure the healing is staying up, which there's no issue with since the AI is, seems pretty decent with keeping up with healing and uh, just unloading damage with positional arts on Mio. So it does take a while since O and P do have a lot more health, so it's more of just like waiting for their health bar to tick down. It, it did give me some trouble. Mio did die a couple times. Uh, other party members almost died a couple times, but around halfway through the fight when I got the health bar around half and they enraged, I started uh, just trying to build a fusion level so or interlink level by just spamming fusion arts as much as I could with Noah and Mio so I could go into Noah's Ouroboros and just just get out all the damage and the fight was over without uh, really any issue. Now is time for the obligatory reroll and this team it's 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 okay it's okay so Noah got Zephyr Mio got Stratagos, Uni Stalker, Lance, or Tyon Flash Fencer. I keep doing that shit. Lance Troubadour, Senna Zephyr, and we got Juniper as our hero. Now here, there's not another fight for like 20 fucking minutes. It's just running around all of the hovering reefs, finally getting into the castle. And then we have to run all the way through the entirety of the castle. There are some... Uh, unavoidable fights they're not mandatory but they are just like overworld fights that just get in the way you can't really avoid them so I didn't think it was worth uh, re-rolling for those since uh, those typically like add up but I didn't think it was necessary and then we finally get to the scary Mobius d &J fight right outside of the Annihilator Ooh, and this fight took a while this fight took me what five minutes six minutes it, it, it was quite the uh it was quite the fight so here with dnj it, i kind of got unlucky since i don't really have any real damage dealers i'm controlling uh uni here with stalker that's about as much damage as i could do because tyon it does not have like any rank with flash fencer so he's doing nothing there so our main attackers are just the two stalkers on the team which don't really do that much damage anyway so it, it's kind of a struggle but d and j uh, they're really fucking annoying with the damage over time like bleed and blaze those kill me a lot and a lot of my party gets very low because of that thankfully we have a uh, Troubadour and Stratagos to kind of keep us healthy. We got the fast recharge with Troubadour and the Stratagos is kind of clutching on the healing. Mio Stratagos is kind of clutching. She's our only healer or really like main healer. Troubadour is just there for like fast recharge, but like actual healing, Mio is kind of doing pretty well combating the bleed and uh, the bleed and blaze here in this fight. But um, eventually I do go to uh, Noah to use Lucky Seven. But since he's a defender class, I can't really build up a uh, talent gauge that much so I can just spam the driver combo. If I had Sword Fighter, or if I had Seraph, I would be getting off driver combos like back to back to back to back. Okay, uh, it's hard to build up talent gauge here as a uh, defender, but and given that he is a defender and not an attacker the damage isn't really all that much on any of the arts or even the full driver combo there's like barely any damage being given so after that a little while later i go into uni's ouroboros just to kind of stall a bit more and just keep up on the healing and buffs since we don't have we don't have signifer we still need buffs and the healing is kind of taken care of this is more of just to stall and uni's Talon Art does increase damage to Mobius, so that does take a nice chunk of health off of him. And then again, it's just fighting our way through the Blaze and Bleed DOTs. 
uh, trying to stay alive as much as we can. And then eventually, I do go into Senna's Ouroboros to just put out a little more damage. And she actually does more damage than I expected. Uh, but we get very close, all right? I I just barely run out of Interlink here right before I'm about to use my Talon Art for some nice damage. Well, actually, no, that's a, for Noah. After Senna, I go into Noah's Ouroboros since we get to level three. Uh, and then I just unload damage there. It's right there, right before I'm about to use my Talon Art. I run out, uh, I overheat, and I get kicked out of Ouroboros. That last Talon Art would have done so much damage that probably could have ended the fight on its own right there. But regardless, we do have to get in the fight for a little bit longer. And then here, this is where Noah comes out with uh, his with his uh, Lucky 7 again, and he clutches and ends the fight with a driver combo. So I had that completely fucking backwards. I went into Noah's Ouroboros first and then Senna's. Not that it fucking matters at all, but I, I thought I might as well mention that. But after that very long and arduous fight, finally over, we get to do our final reroll. So here, Noah again got Zephyr. Uh, Noah really likes getting repeat classes. So Noah again has Zephyr. Mio has Martial Artist. Naponic Champion on Uni. Uh, Tyon also got Zephyr. Lan's got Sword Fighter. Senna also got Naponic Champion. And then we have Fiona again for our hero. So a pretty decently stacked team. It's not optimal or anything. But it is very nice and we will have no issue surviving uh, the upcoming Miss Melly fight. And now that we're in the fight with the fake Queen of Agnes, here I decide to control uh, Mio with Martial Artist. Uh, it, it doesn't go too bad. Like I said, we have two Naponic Champions and two Zephyrs on our team. We're not in trouble at all. So, and then we have Fiona here with the buffs anyway. So we had no issue. One thing that did piss me off though, is that, so for the Talon Art for Martial Artist, it takes all of the recharge for all your arts and adds that to the damage of your Talon Art. So the more arts you have charged, the more damage your Talon Art does. So I completely filled out all of them, got all three fusions, and then I used my Talon Art and it fucking misses. So that pissed me off, bro. That was a huge chunk of damage I would have done that I just didn't get. So here I build up a uh, level three interlink with Noah and Mio and then go into Noah's Ouroboros and just upon my sword, I place my strength. I just go out all out on damage. We do a pretty decent amount of damage. We take her from like, what, like, what, 75% down to 25% HP just from Noah's Ouroboros. So that was nice. And then the rest of the fight, I'm just using Noah with his lucky seven to just pump out damage and we finally finished the fight against Melly. And with the conclusion of that fight, that marks the stopping point for the randomizer. I'm ending it here, at least the video is ending here. This is where I stopped at when I finished this fight. I haven't touched the save file since. Uh, I decided to break this up into two videos because if this was one huge long video, this wouldn't come out for like another two years, all right? I'm already slacking. This video is already way past due. I announced this like, what, almost a year ago that I was working on this. And it, no, not even that. It was like, what, three, four months ago? Maybe half a year ago that I announced that I'm doing this. And uh, look, here we are. So. If I had done the whole game, this would not even be done yet. But part two to this will come out at some point. I have no idea. This might come out next year or the near year after that. All right. But finally, I got this one done. But that's really that's really it. I really enjoyed this uh, and I am kind of excited to continue on with the rest of the game. It's just going to get harder and longer from here, but I'm ready for it. We're just barely halfway through the game. We still got a lot to go, but I really hope y'all enjoyed this one. I put, I quite enjoyed playing it and uh, making it into a video. So I really hope y'all enjoyed this one, but now it's finally time to calm down and play some SMT5 Vengeance. That shit is dropping very soon, and I'm gonna be no life from that. Wanted to get this out before that dropped. So here we are. See you next mission and play some goddamn Xenoblade.